घास काट रही थी ये धमाका हुआ है तो फिर आवाज़ आई है मकानों के गिरने की और लोगों के रोने पिटने की तो फिर इधर उधर देखा है ये दुनिया उलट पलट रही थी क्यामत का दिन देखा है जी क्यामत से कम नहीं था एक आवाज़ आई है जिस तरह बहुत बड़ा बम ब्लास्ट होता है तो उस सर हम उसी जगह पर इस तरह फिरते रहे बाद में फिर उधर से आए स्कूल से बच्चे निकाले हैं स्कूल से पता चला कि घर भी गिर गए हैं यहाँ से आकर बच्चे निकाले हैं निकालने के बाद फिर In December 2005, 10 weeks after the earthquake, I traveled to Kashmir. I wanted to visit the Citizens Foundation. I had received a fundraising email from them a week after the earthquake in Pakistan, which I had circulated amongst my friends in Scotland. I now wanted to go and visit the foundation and see for myself the work that they were doing. There was destruction all around us. Everywhere lay the rubble from collapsed houses and shops. Amongst the mounds of stone and the clutter of fallen wooden beams, one could catch glimpses of the life that had once inhabited these houses. Sometimes it was a broken chair or a part of a bed. I had heard that the Citizens Foundation was in the process of setting up a thousand schools of a very high standard for poor children throughout Pakistan. In Muzaffarabad, I got in touch with their coordinator, a young architect called Adnan. Within 24 hours of our landing here, uh, we had two medical camps set up. What was immediately required was medical and surgical help. Since then, we have performed approximately anywhere between 380 to 400 surgeries and provided relief to an additional 1,000 to 1,200 people of medical help and minor injuries. Now, while all this was going on, there was another set of people who were there who had to remain focused on being able to supply our first immediate relief package, which is the tents, food, and shelter and warm blankets. We provided immediate relief to about 25,000 people. Beyond that, we had said that we will rebuild 5,000 homes. At the moment, I've been tasked to be a project manager um, to help with the shelter. Uh, it's a two-phased two uh, project, really. There's the temporary shelter, the basically emergency shelter for the winter, and there's the permanent housing. The Citizens Foundation has pledged to build 5,000 emergency winter shelters, and after the winter is over, to construct 5,000 seismically designed earthquake-proof houses. We travelled with one of their young volunteers to a valley where they're building some of these emergency winter shelters. So this is one of our villages basically, that, actually two of our villages that we're working in, um, Azim Khan and Nawab Khan. And you'll see like a bunch of our houses either being constructed or you know fully constructed. So you can see like one, two, three, four, five, six, right, right there, six houses that we have. If you look over there, that's the basic frame, the wood frame of our house. One of the houses that you can see that, you know, as a result of the earthquake, it's completely destroyed. And one of our houses being built over here. Basically, we've got about a, a, a three foot wall. And what happens is when you start the construction of the house, it's a 15 by 15 space that you clear. And you, you create like a, a space this big in the ground and you dig about half a feet inside. 
Then you got pillars like this, the wood right here. You've got 12 of these. So four corners, two in the middle, two in the middle, two in the middle, two in the middle, that make 12. And if you look at the structure above, this is what, you, you want it to be triangular, so this, when the snow comes and when there's a wind load. Right now, this is, you know, to get them through winter. And we're, it's a pretty good structure on its own. And the idea is that they can use this eventually for storage, whether it's animal storage or something else. So it's not like, you know what, we built this, get it through the winter, we're gonna get you permanent housing in the summer and you're done. You can use this, you know, in the long term. Uh, yeah, the front's fallen out. This was open, this was, this was most probably a veranda. This was one room, another room over here, room in the corner. So you can, you can see it. If you look at this, this is what, what, what they call in, in local terms chadre, which basically means sheet. So these are the GI sheets, the corrugated sheets that we issue that they use for the construction of the houses. Uh, it sounds easy in principle, but uh, trying to get the message across of how to build these uh, structures correctly and safely it can be quite a task. The winter shelter program is very interesting. It was almost 98%, 99% based on self-help basis. We put a bandsaws in every village that we went. In some villages, the bandsaws were already available, and we would just facilitate by providing them electricity, generator, or, you know. We would provide assistance in terms of giving local carpenters 300 rupees, which is about $5, their job was to size the wood into the specifications that we wanted. And uh, once we facilitated that, we, we could see people walking down the valley, carrying their logs of wood into the bandsaw area. Then we also noticed, because these logs of wood were heavy, we said that we'd provide them another logistic support by giving them jeeps or small trucks uh, along the valley, along the 17, 18 kilometer. And the, this was free of cost for them. Just because of providing these two facilities of the bandsaw, and the vehicle for movement, the uptake improved by 300%. This program started on the 12th of November, and by the 18th of uh, December, which is approximately five weeks into the program, we're well over 2,000, 2,200 uh, units in place. We're hoping in the next four weeks, which is by the middle of January, we should have completed our 5,000 units at various stages of construction. Next phase is very, very, very clear cut. We have to go back and rebuild homes in most of the areas. Now we are, uh, we've set the pace. The villagers know us. They welcome us. I mean, we have stockbrokers from New York. We have doctors from England. We have trekkers from the UK, and and they just come in, camp in. And the, the most important aspect is they're all very important people in their lives, whatever they're doing. And they take four to eight weeks off. This is not a four-day or two-day or three-day program that they're coming into. They're taking weeks and months off to be able to come and spend time. And that has been the strength of our program, where we've got the best management skill sets available uh, uh, to run this program with us over here. And that's what, when, when I tell, when we go back and tell people that we've managed to achieve in five weeks, 2,200, 2,300 winter shelters, which are small little homes. These are not, you know, some tents or thing like that. These are small little homes in remote areas of this entire affected space. It's very difficult for people to believe. So while we are building these 5,000 homes, we are hoping to be able to reach anywhere between 100 to 150,000 other households to train them to be able to build seismically designed earthquake resistant homes for themselves. We will have training centers where we will train the masons, the steel fixers, and various other uh, uh, tradesmen over there where we could almost certify that these have been trained with people so that this capacity building starts immediately in this region. This is super critical for uh, part of our uh, program because at the moment what you will notice is that uh, if you're walking around and looking at the villages, a very serious threat to this entire effort is that people have started rebuilding. And a lot of them are going back and rebuilding in a similar fashion what they had done earlier and this is another catastrophe. The entire program for rebuilding 5,000 homes, capacity building, training process is about 2 billion rupees, which is approximately 30 to 35 million US dollars. It is bitterly cold at night now, because you're five, five and a half thousand feet up above sea level. And when you see small children running around with you know, thin clothing on, and how they, how they survive, I, I've got four or five layers on, and I feel cold. No matter how long you are here, you, you still feel that 
there's so much more to be done. But you know, you, you do what you can. But um, it's it's just staggering the amount of work and effort that's needed out here. We're still looking for another 25 million dollars in the next four to eight weeks to coming our way, and we need help from everybody from the entire world community to be able to fill in that gap. <laughs> Yeah.